It's my pleasure to speak about EGA, EGA vasculitis in childhood. It is a vasculitis of small vessels without granuloma. Diagnosis is based on the association of a purpura predominant on the lower limbs, usually palpable, plus one of the following four criteria. Abdominal pain, EJA deposits on the biopsy, arthritis or arthralgia, and or renal involvement. The incidence is around 6 to 20 cases per 100,000 children per year, 10 times more than in adults. Mean age of children is 6 years, with 75% of children less than 8 years old and 19% less than 10 years old. Boys are affected more often than girls. Regarding the physiopathology, patients present an elevated production of galactose deficient IgA1, circulating IgG autoantibodies specific for galactose deficient IgA1, formation of immune, immune complex, and tissue deposition of these immune complexes with secondary complement activation in the tissues. Plasma level of immunoglobulin H is increased in more than half of cases, but their dosage is without clinical interest. Genetic factors are involved and an infectious trigger is often present. Cutaneous symptoms are the first scenes of the disease in three quarters of, of cases, hardly preceded by joint or gastrointestinal symptoms and exceptionally renal. The purpura is predominant on the lower limbs and buttocks. It is symmetrical and most often palpable. If a biopsy, biopsy is performed, the pathology study shows leukocytoclastic vasculitis with EJA deposit. Relapses of purpura are extremely frequent favored by orthostatism and require, require resumption of renal monitoring. Dapson can extremely rarely be used in severe chronic forms. Gastrointestinal symptoms are reported in 50 to 70 percent of patients. They may precede skin lesion in about 10 percent of cases. The main symptom is abdominal pain, which is increased by eating. Gastrointestinal symptoms and lesions can be complicated by hemorrhages, interception, perforation, protein losing enteropathy, or pancreatitis. Ultrasonography is widely used to diagnose these complications. Treatment of gastrointestinal symptoms relies first on, on fasting, semi-liquid diet, antalgic medics, and corticosteroids, which enable a rapid resolution of pain, as shown by Ronkenen et al. in a rand randomized trial. Joint symptoms are reported in 50 to 70 percent of patients. They may precede skin lesions in about 15% of cases. The main symptoms is pain and swelling with local inflammation, mainly affecting large joints such as knee and ankles. These lesions are symmetrical, are not mobile, and do not leave sickly. Treatment of joint symptoms is based on pain medications, rest, and corticosteroids. Among other organs that can be affected, the testes are frequently involved in boys with orchitis, 
scrotal edema and hematoma. Testicular torsion must be ruled out by ultrasound and symptoms disappear with corticosteroid therapy. Renal involvement is reported in 40 to 50 percent of patients. It is observed soon after the, the onset of the disease. During the first months in 80 percent of children, during the first two months in almost all children. Risk factors for renal involvement are age over height, abdominal pain and relapses. Hematuria is almost cons constant. It can be associated with proteinuria and or renal insufficiency. 20 to 30 percent of patients with renal involvement present a nephrotic range proteinuria. And less than 5 percent of nephrotic uh, a nephrotic syndrome and or a renal insufficiency. Hypertension can be ex exceptionally isolated. Renal involvement is often asymptomatic and must be screened for with urinary dipstick, dipstick test to detect blood and albumin. Tests must be frequent once a week for the first two months and can be spaced out the following months. Frequent testing must be re-implemented after each disease recurrence. No treatment prevents renal involvement in children presenting an IgA vasculitis. In the late, latest, latest, sorry, latest published studies, the prognosis factors associated, associated with renal sequela are First, the time between the onset of the nephropathy and the biopsy or start of corticosteroid therapy. Second, the presence of, of chronic lesions on the renal biopsy, nephrotic syndrome and an extracapillary proliferation on biopsy. The indication for renal biopsy, biopsy is based on the presence and extent of proteinuria. Proteinuria can resolve spontaneously in some cases, but chronic lesions can appear very early in the course of the disease. Thus, they were already present in 22% of biopsy done before 30, 30 days in these recent studies. Study, sorry. The objectives of the biopsy are to confirm the diagnosis if in case of doubt, to participate in the therapeutic choices, in particular by the evaluation of both chronic lesions and acute active lesions. The treatment choice depends on the extent of the proteinuria and the results of the biopsy, if it is performed. The two main therapeutic classes, classes used are corticosteroid and inhibitor of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The presence of a proteinuria justifies an urgent pediatric nephrology advice. In our center, if proteinuria is greater than 1 gram per day and or greater than 200 mg per millimole of creatinine, persisting more than 8 days and lasting less than 15 days and or if there is endocapillary or extracapillary proliferation and biopsy, children are treated with methylprednisolone pulses followed by oral corticosteroid therapy. In combination, treatment with a renin angiotensin aldosterone system blocker is started and gradually increased. This strategy relies mainly on low-level uh, studies. In case of insufficient response to this treatment, 
different therapies can be discussed. Plasmapheresis, if kidney dysfunction is severe, mycophenolate mofetil, cyclosporin, or rituximab can also be used. In our center, if the proteinuria is between 0.3 and 1 gram per day, and or between 40 and 200 mg per millimole of creatinine, persisting for more than 8 to 15 days, children are treated with inhibitor of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system with rapid dose increase if proteinuria does not disappear. If the therapeutic response is insufficient, a renal biopsy is performed to discuss the addition of corticosteroid therapy. Regarding the long-term prognosis, a British cross-sectional study after a follow-up of almost five years showed that the risk of hypertension was increased by 52% and the risk of kidney, uh, kidney failure by 89% compared to the general population of the same age. Regarding the risk of chronic renal failure, AJA vasculitis is responsible for less than 1% of end-stage renal failure observed before the age of 18. It is estimated that about 5% of children with renal involvement will develop chronic kidney disease. In the event of renal involvement, long-term follow-up is necessary with regular screening for proteinuria as long as the hematuria persists. In summary, the diagnosis of EJA vasculitis is, clinic, is a clinical diagnosis in most cases. The risks are gastrointestinal and renal at the onset of the disease, and then renal in the long term. Regular screening for kidney involvement is crucial with a weekly urinary dipstick for two, two months and more than a spaced between two and 12 months after each relapse. Proteinuria has a major pronostic value. The treatment of renal involvement is urgent. It is firstly based on high-dose corticosteroid therapy an inhibitor of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system with, in addition, if insufficient response, immunosuppressive therapies. Thank you for your attention and sorry for my English. <laughs>